Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. I'm excited for today's roundtable podcast. I get to see my dogs because my teenage son has introduced me to Little Wayne. And I started listening to I Miss My Dogs. And I thought, oh, boy, I do miss my dogs. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you probably are not living with teenagers. So, that being said, We've got Bearland Aaron. Bearland Aaron, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well, Mark. How are you doing? Good, good. You're, you're still scratch. He still scratches his head on the whole little Wayne thing. We've got the Nightcap Meister, the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. How are you, Scott? Great, Mark. Glad to be here. Glad to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Mark? I'm good. Are we safer? No. <laughs> no. I had to ask. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. I, I wish we were safer, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know what? When I don't feel safe, I go to a little place called Lots, and I look over Tate's shoulder, and I just feel a lot better about the world. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's actually a program out there to look over Tate's shoulder and see how he actually runs his own land business. Go to landgeek.com forward slash lots, L-O-T-S, which leads us to, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, how are you? I'm great. Uh, doing well. Can't complain. Great. Great. And of course, the Sherpa, the brain, the professor, you know him, you love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net, LandMoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, PostingDomination.com forward slash the language. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. And you know, you know what, man? Like, you know what, dog? I got to tell you, I, I miss the times that we would shine. You know, you keep me on your side. You know, like, you know, you would teach me how to ride. You know? <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop it right now. <laughs> Is we might need to redo this whole intro. That was. And uh, you would teach me how to pry, brother. So uh, I had to God, roll. Put him on mute, Mark. Put him on mute, please. Why? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to put both you guys on mute. Apparently, look, we have our own land. Listen, I I read an article the other day, Mark, that said that this high school teacher he created a website that teaches parents all the lingo, like. You know, scooping. You know what scooping is? I got scooping over here. Is that what you do with an ice cream? Come scoop me, dog. Scooping, yeah. like pick me up. Let's go. Can oh, you scoop dog me? and scooping. I, I was thinking yeah. of what I have to do after the snow melts. Yeah. I don't know what that means because I'm in Florida. We don't get snow, but eh, yeah, see, Mark's getting it down. Here we go. Oddly enough, though, I think Mark's phone, because Mark's listening to his phone, I think it's going through his earphones because we don't hear it. You can hear it? <laughs> and, no, no, and it's like that silent dance party. Mark's got the silent dance party <laughs> going on over there. All right, just look up Little Wayne, I Miss My Dogs. It's from like 2004. Yeah. EWGS. It's cool. All right, dog. All right, dogs. All right, let's get into our topic, shall we, dogs? My dogs. I feel, I feel like Arsenio Hall here. Should we do we don't like the dog pound? The, the, the dog food? pound. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. All let's right. go. Let's get back to 2019. So Mimi Schmidt, the her new nickname is like the Facebook, I don't know. Queen. 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 Facebook Queen. The FBQ. So <laughs> people are always asking Mimi, what is the best practices to put up an ad on Facebook. Mimi, what's best practices? Far and wide. Advertise far and wide. You know, a lot of these um, properties that we buy are in very rural, rural, small town places. So if you post your ad there, a marketplace there, you're not going to get, you'll get some responses, but it's, it's a big world out there. The point is to get the word out a lot of different places and you'll learn from doing that where your land is, has, there's a demand for it. 
right? And then you can double down on those areas and still continue to. I mean, I've sold a property 45 minutes south of me here in DC for out in Costilla, right? So there are people all over the United States that want land and where we're selling it, not just where the land is. Yeah, but Mimi, like, you know, Scott Todd will teach, put up a blind ad on Craigslist. So Scott, can you just kind of define for everybody what a blind ad is? Yeah. Okay. So basically when I say, when I say, uh, put up a blind ad, it's oftentimes because you don't have a, a specific property that you're selling. Maybe you're, you're new, you're trying to get, you know, names on your buyer's list. Maybe you're just kind of testing the market. A blind ad is basically an ad that says, Hey, five acres in this area. You, you kind of talk about a hypothetical property. It doesn't necessarily mean that you, you own it. You're not listing the property number, AP number, everything. You're just saying, hey, five acres in this area, maybe put a price down, $500 down or $100 down, uh, this amount per month. And it's a very generic kind of a thing. And really what a blind ad does is if you imagine, like imagine walking over to a tree and like shaking the tree and all the coconuts come falling off, right? You're, 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 you're literally shaking the tree and getting the coconuts that sounds to gather dangerous. the email addresses. Maybe I shouldn't call customers coconuts, but whatever. That you're really getting those email coconuts. addresses of people who are interested in that type of a property. So that's what a blind ad is. Okay, so let's go around the, the round table and let's ask them about the effectiveness. Have they put out blind ads on Facebook within groups and marketplace? FBQ, we'll start with you. Blind ads are great for Craigslist, but not for Facebook. And um, Facebook, people can get an idea of who you are through your feed and they're, they're savvy, right? They're going to look at that ad and they want to see the property. They want to know that you're for real and that the property is for real. You have to be specific. You have to provide pictures of the property, APNs, all of that. And uh, it's hard enough for us to build credibility. So I think it just, it makes it harder when you have a general ad. So be specific. I, you know, we've had, we've debated this. I, I do much better, better with a long ad, even if people re-ask the questions on information you've already given in the ad. Um, in addition to having a long ad and being specific about the land, your profile, it's important that it be a, a profile, a real profile. People are very savvy. They'll notice if it's just a profile that you threw up that has two weeks worth of history in it and one picture, right? Um, you, you're going to have to, you have to do better than that. Right. So that's much you said. All right. Technician, Eric Peterson, what about you? Yeah. So <clears throat> I kind of agree with Mimi there. I, I'm pretty wary about using a general or blind ad on Facebook. Um, just because of that, because, you know, people, they tend to want to, check out the property, make sure you own it, all that kind of stuff. So you really got to be careful. But one thing, one way I like to get around that is if I've had property in that area already and maybe I've sold it to advertise that property. And then when they contact me, I can tell them that one's sold and hey, I've got more coming or something like that. Um, I find that's a little bit more of a legitimate way to get away with a somewhat blind ad on Facebook. Mimi, what do you think? Completely agree. I've had ads that are a month old that people have responded to, right? Property's gone. It's, it works perfect. All right. The, the Nightcap Meister, the OG. How are, you, how are you putting your ads up on Facebook? So I would, I would agree. I don't do blind ads on Facebook. Uh, I have also noticed on Facebook that you do need to be very specific, but you need to do it in a simple way because I think people just don't have an attention span these days anywhere to read an ad five paragraphs long on Facebook. Uh, the other thing I found on Facebook is uh, on multiple attempts, I have listed multiple properties in Facebook. I almost get no leads from those ads. So it seems like the more combobulated the ad is, the more complex it is. Uh, the less the less leads I get, and the more specific I am talking about one property specifically with some really nice pictures. And I think pictures do all the difference on Facebook as well. Um, I get better leads from. So that that's what I notice uh, 
in, in with my experience. You know what I noticed? Scott Bossman has a wealth of knowledge. And if you want to tap in to that knowledge, schedule a call with him or the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Today's podcast is sponsored by scheduling a call with Mike or Scott. That's it. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. They can, you know, basically diagnose where you're at in your process. It should be start with the toolkit, which by the way, we now have the guarantee to rule all guarantees. We guarantee if you just execute on the toolkit that it won't cost you anything. So if you work that, that program for six months and you don't at least make back your investment, we'll refund you. It's that simple. Plus there's flight school. Maybe you want to get all done in three days. Flights go live. Maybe you're just ready to just start climbing up the mountain with one of the Sherpas, Mimi, Eric, Tate. Do it. Look at one-on-one coaching. But you won't know what's best for you until you get on a call. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and get to listen to Scott Bossman's and Mike Zeno's mellifluous voices. How about that? <laughs> Barry Land Aaron. That was, that, was, that was a word. I like it. That's right. That's right. That's, uh, I think there's a word for it. It's, it's called uh, sepquadillious or sepquadillion, which means somebody that loves big words. Huh, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> who knew? Very lame. You must have like word of the day toilet paper or something like that. It's all over the house. <laughs> my, my kids have a tremendous vocabulary. It's got and if SAT they don't, prep, SAT prep going on over there, it sounds like. Absolutely. Mm. On my kids, I'm feeling a bit lugubrious because I'm not enjoying your study habits. <laughs> so, Bearland Aaron, let's get back on track. Um, how are you marketing on Facebook? Um, pretty much the same as everybody else. Um, I got maybe a medium to long ad going now. Uh, contrary to my previous arguments with Mimi, I think I've come over to her side. <laughs> um, really specific about the property, pictures of the property. Um, sometimes I will use like a generic marketing picture uh, to create some like a, an image of what you can do on the property, but I still also include actual pictures of the property and Google Earth stuff, um, those kind of things. So it's all really specific to one property. I have never really done a, um, a fully blind ad. I've done some things where um, I may have advertised like three or four properties um, in a specific area, like, hey, I've got several properties available in this town or whatever. Um, contact me for more details, and those don't really work much. You know, people want to see the specifics, you know. Um, I'm finding the same thing as everybody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Big Papa, my dog, Tate Litchfield. What's your take? You know, I, I kind of echo what's already been repeated. Um, blind ads on Facebook cause a lot of confusion and a lot of, uh, I don't know, upset inquiries, I guess. More people want specifics. So give them those specifics. Get, get very detailed ads out there. Uh, not, it's not like that's going to cause somebody to read it or not. It's just going to give them a better idea of what they're actually contacting you about if it's the right size or the right location. And so I try to be specific on Facebook. Uh, Craigslist, that's a whole different ball game, you know, go vague, blind ads, try everything. I think the moral of this conversation is just do it right? Just post ads, just post ads on Facebook, just post ads on, on marketplace, buy sell groups, uh, Craigslist, Line Moto. I mean, you're not going to know what works unless you try everything. So you've got to be everywhere when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Being everywhere. So Scott Todd, if I'm going to be everywhere, how am I going to execute on that? Well, I think that what you have to do is you, you got to, you got to realize that like, first, you don't know where, where your buyer is going to come from. And so if you're getting very selective and being like, well, I'm only going to be on Craigslist. Well, then that might take you a little bit longer because you don't know if the particular per person for this 
uh, property, the, spe spe uh, the specific buyer for this property is going to come from Craigslist, Facebook, and Moto. You don't know where it's going to come from. So I think that what you, you need to do is you need to have, you need to come up with a strategy, a posting strategy. So like, you know, my posting strategy basically says, okay, we're going to post this type of an ad on, on uh, Craigslist. And I like, I like blind ads on Craigslist. I, I like those types of ads because what it's doing is it's, it's shaking the trees like I talked about. Then on Facebook, I'm not doing a blind ad. So on Facebook, I'm doing a, a different type of an ad like a Mimi might, might teach you, okay? So like you, now you're dealing with an ad that's more specific to that particular property. But even then you need to have a posting schedule because you know, if you just go out on your own and say, well, I'm just gonna post these whenever I feel like it, well then you're, you're not gonna be, you're, you're not gonna have that rhythm and you need to generate some system that's gonna give you a rhythm. You know, okay, I'm gonna post the properties on Landmoto when I get them. So boom, that's part of my posting strategy. I'm gonna market on, on Facebook on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And I'm gonna post, you know, these properties. I'm gonna hit this area. And and Mimi talks about, I know she talked about it at her at the last boot camp, for example. She talked about her her pattern of like, okay, I'm gonna post the cities that start with, you know, A through uh, E, or I'm gonna post East Coast to, to West Coast type of a, a deal. So she doesn't uh, inundate them. And she has a very logical plan of executing it. And then she executes that plan. So I think it takes some time to sit down and to say, listen, I know one of the things I need to do is every day I need to market. So what does that mean? It means every day I need to show up to the marketing table and I need to be doing something. So if you just show up and go, well, okay, it's time to do marketing. I don't know what to do now. So let me just wing it. Well, that's not going to work. There should be a day planned for your deal of the week. That's your message out to your, uh, to your team or to your uh, buyers. For me, my deal of week goes out on Sunday. Boom. This is what we do on Sundays. Everybody knows it. That's what we do. Um, you know, on these days, we're going to post on Craigslist. Like every day, we're going to post on Craigslist. When we get properties, new properties, we're going to put them on, on Landmoto. If we see that a property's not performing well on Landmoto, like we're not getting the responses that we want, we're looking at the view count, we're not seeing the responses. Guess what? On Thursdays, we're taking those down and we're going to repost them a couple of them. So we're going to kind of like change it up a little bit. We're going to rewrite our ads. And then on these days, we're going to post in these platforms. Um, and I think that when you do that, all of a sudden you have a plan. And, you know, like Mark, I always say that probably the, the greatest marketer I know of is you. And it's not that you're, I mean, I think you're a great marketer. I don't mean to minimize it. What I'm about to say that you're a great marketer, but, but the one thing that you do that makes you a great marketer is you're consistent. Every Tuesday, this podcast comes out. Every Thursday, the next podcast comes out. Every Thursday, your review digest comes out. You show up consistently in the different places on a regular basis, and you're there, you're present, and you're participating into the marketplace. I will accept the compliment. Thank you. <laughs> and it's not a backhanded one either. You're great, it's but... No, no. I mean, if anyone's going to give me a backhanded compliment, it's going to be Eric. And we'll wait for that. Because, you know, at boot camp, I'll always ask people, like, do you think that I email too much? And, and you know, oftentimes hands will go up. And I say, good. That's right. So in, you know, in relationships, you always think, well, familiarity breeds contempt. But in marketing, familiarity breeds trust because ultimately you trust that I will consistently show up. Now it's up. It's my responsibility to make sure that when I do show up, there's something of value that wants you to you know, hopefully open up that email. That's on me. So if it can't just be a bunch of just junk, that being said, I am showing up consistently with enough value that I'll, I know that, you know, people are going to trust that, you know, what I'm putting out there is good enough. And so ultimately with your ads, you just got to be consistent. You got to put out more ads than you think you need. Uh, we talk about this a lot at, at, at bootcamp. You don't need to be a billion dollar company with your marketing, but you need to have a Geico mindset, right? They show up every day, 20 times a day, 15 minutes or more could save you. And we all, all can answer that question because they're consistently showing up. Are there too many ads for Geico? 
I don't think so. I love their ads. That's why you've got to show up every day. That's, that's the, uh, I think the consistency is the key. And again, Geico is not just marketing on one channel. They're on every single channel. Just like what Tate said, you should be marketing on every effective channel. Facebook, Craigslist, Landmodo. Those are your big three. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox here. And um, we're going to ask Nimi, the FBQ, the terrorist hunter, for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book. Oh. Maybe show a channel, Mike Zeno, and give a quote. Your tip of the week. So this is not a new tip, but it's new to me. So at boot camp, um, Scott was talking about email to mail, which is a service through click to mail. And it never, I was like, yeah, I'll add that to my list of all these things I need to do. So I, um, I noticed that I would have people respond to my offer letters and they wouldn't even counter. I'd be so excited. And then they didn't even bother to put an email or a phone number. How many times have you had that happen? Like, oh, I don't want to wait three or four more months till I mail to this county again to get this deal. So I went and looked up the email to mail service. You put this one email address in, into the two line. In the subject, you put the name and the address separated by semicolons and don't put a comma between the city and the state. And then you just attach PDFs. So a standard letter to the person and their PDF accepted offer and mail it. And click to mail, prints it out and mails it to the person. I was, um, I was really shocked how easy that was and I, disappoint, I was disappointed in myself that I hadn't started to use it like two years ago. So that's how I, I'm using click to mail now for people that don't get the info on accepted offers. Okay, so just so I'm clear, yeah. you get an accepted offer, yep. but there's no information on it. Right, they signed the accepted offer and took the effort to mail it, physically mail it to me or fax it to me with no email address or phone number. So I have this great accepted offer. They don't even bother to counter. So I'm thrilled to get it, but then I have no way to follow up with them, but to mail them again. So to right. mail them again, you go to email to mail. So from your email, yeah, you send them one letter that say, it says, I've received your accepted offer. Yeah, I need, you know, please contact me here. Yeah. for the rest of this information. Right, and it, I found it was super, it's so easy to use. I was so impressed. You just, it, it, let me, you put quick letter at em2mail.com and you just attach a PDF. So you could just have a standard letter. So you just quick letter at em2mail. You put the name and the address and you separate each line by semicolon and attach your form letter, contact me at, hey, you accepted my offer. I didn't get any contact information. Please contact me. Boom. And they will, it's like 80 cents. They print it out and mail it to the person. So then I'll get a response in 10 days instead of having to wait 90 days or 120 days until I mail again. Brilliant. That's a great tip. So, That's a great tip. I don't, Scott's been talking about email to mail for years. I wish I would have looked at it sooner. Wait, Bossman or Scott Todd? Todd. I think he uses it for different reasons, though. Don't you? I do. Yep. Scott Todd, what are you using it for? So ba basically, it's a secret, Mark. I can't tell you. No, ba basically, uh, <laughs> did you guys see his face? He's like, what? <laughs> what? No, uh, ba basically what happens is when my uh, intake manager when they need to send a deed to somebody, we try to email it to them and say, here, we're gonna email you the deed, you print it out and go. And what happens is sometimes they say, no, we're, we're not, we don't have a printer. No, we'd rather be mailed. So then they used to send it to me. I used to send it a priority mail, a whole story. I'd chase the mailman down the street. Uh, it was a nightmare, it was bad. And uh, we won't get into the specifics of what happened on my last event, but it was bad. Then what happened was um, I decided to start using email to mail. So now what happens is we have a dedicated email address set up on, you go to the, to the click to mail website. You, you sign up for this program. 
you set up this specific email address and then you whitelist who can mail to it. So then whoever mails to it, as Mimi said, you, you set up this one, they mail to that one, that specific address for you, click to mail takes it, they print it out, they take your PDFs, they print out, they mail it. There's no more chasing the mailman down the street because you missed a little red flag up time. And uh, that's how we use it. So we use it for the deeds piece. Very, very cool. All right. Well, I thought this was a uh, very informative, very fun roundtable podcast. And um, I want to thank all the listeners. Hopefully you're getting value. And if you are, put it up on the interwebs. Uh, put it on the social medias, the Facebooks and the Twitters and the Instagrams. I don't know. What else are the, the cool kids using? the snaps, whatever it is. Um, share it with a friend. And then please do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We are going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. All right. Are we good? We're good, Mark. We're good. Mark. We're good. We're going to do a quick count now. We're going to go one, two, three. Ready? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. I think it's better when it's quick. I do too. I thought it was. So I'm. So we're at boot camp, and uh, Barry and Aaron, we're having dinner, and I put on because it's it's kind of weird to have like just a quiet room at any point, right? So in the background, I go to my phone. I start putting on some music. And I mean, you would have thought that I went to a chalkboard and just put my nails down the chalkboard. Eric Peterson is like, this is my, this is my pet peeve. I can't stand the speaker from the cell phone. And to this day now, I can't, I can't even listen to my own speaker because I keep thinking about Eric being upset with me. Is that odd? Mark, I got what you need. I got what you need, man. What is it? To the boot camp, to that room. We can bring our own speaker. It's a Bose speaker. Oh, Bose speaker. Okay. Okay. Like, look at how, it's like a baby. This thing doesn't sound like a baby. This is massive. So massive sound. We can put Eric's pet peeve to rest. I don't really understand why he would have that pet peeve. But look, we don't want anybody to be uncomfortable, right? No, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Scott. for a second there, I, you know, he looked at me and he's like, my ears are bleeding. And I had to like, and it wasn't even a bad song. It wasn't like, a great song. I miss my dogs from Little Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric, I'm glad that Scott Todd has our solution now. Me too. So for, uh, for Vegas, we'll have the speaker. That, that will solve the issue, correct? Yeah, it should. It should. We'll as, long, feel better. as long as it produces the audio quality that Eric needs, you know, look, man, he's accustomed to live music. He's accustomed to playing that guitar. <laughs> That's true. Well, now, Eric, will you, now let's say you're in your, your fancy car, right? Will you listen to the music through Bluetooth? Yeah, you will. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, we're good. Let's go into the speakers. Okay. So you're not like a total audiophile. No, it's just, it sounds terrible coming out of the phone speaker. That's all there is to it. I agree with you, Eric. It does sound I terrible. Plus, I'll add, we also had another phone playing music in the same room at the same time. Can't handle it. <laughs> that, okay, that I'll give you. <laughs> that, that is annoying. So, but, but would you have preferred silence? We can talk. At no, the end of a long day, Mark, it's okay. No, I'm, I'm not saying, I know, but it's just, it's just like that the vibe is kind of weird. Like you don't go to a restaurant. There's always like background music. True. Now we have a solution. Scott Todd's going to bring his speaker. We're now, Mark, I have a question for you. In your car, is there ever silence in your car when you're driving? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So that's okay. It's a quiet space. If, it's, if I'm by myself... It's a quiet space. Now, let's say that my daughter is with her friends. Oh, you I will can't. have to put music on, right, so that they feel comfortable talking and I can eavesdrop. Yeah. 
yeah. right? But if I don't put the music on, they won't. It's just like awkward. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. But like for me, I get in a car and it's like silence and it's great. Like, oh man. It's one of the reasons I like flying too, because guess what? No one can find you. They can't get to you. Flying. Dave Schmidt had some crazy stories, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank goodness those are over. Hopefully there won't be any more crazy stories. Yeah, yeah you want to feel emasculated, have a party with Dave Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> there, you, there you go. Oh, it's man. all good. All right, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to go have a, a very manly lunch. <laughs> a whole food salad. Alfalfa right. sprouts on top. Alfalfa sprouts, you know. I might throw in an extra thing of black beans. I'm not afraid. Barely is, it, is it cold there in Scottsdale? Like you're wearing a long sleeve shirt, man. Like, that too. It, it struck me. It was raining at 60s. It's cold here. It's what? global weirding, not global warming. We're having weird weather. I mean, oh, I got an earful from my Uber driver about the weather out there, man. Like uh, when I was going to the airport, he was telling me all about how it's un, uh, unseasonably cool. And um, I'm like, dude, it's 101 degrees. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know, but it should be higher than that right now. I'm like, are you complaining? He's like, well, I think we're in trouble. I'm like, what do you mean you're in trouble? He's like, oh, the whole, the whole summer is going to be thrown off now. It's going to be a weird summer. It's like, it won't be 150. I'm like, <laughs> wow. I did learn something though, Mark, about your weather out there. And I didn't know this, but where we were, we were in Chandler, right? Right. Well, the elevation change between Chandler and Scottsdale is like a thousand feet difference, which I didn't know. I thought like, oh, it's the same area. So there's a thousand foot difference. And he told me that's why everybody wants to live in Scottsdale because the thousand feet makes it cooler in Scottsdale than like in Chandler. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize that. So did you know that? I did not know that, but now I'm going to be flaunting my yeah. altitude superiority around this city. <laughs> yeah. He told me that that's why, that's why, uh, and like, I don't know, like you got to tell me about your own neighborhood, but he told me like, that's why when it rains, it does rain like in Scottsdale, like Northern Scottsdale or whatever, like that area gets more rain than the other parts because of the higher elevation. I'm like, what? Wow. So look at that, man. Yeah, now when I'm, you know, making conversation with somebody and say, where are they from? They say, Chandler. I'll just look them dead in the eye. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I was better than you. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know who knew that, though? I, you know who I know probably knows that whole deal? Who? Dave Schmidt. You know why? He knows all about altitudes and elevations, man. He knows all this stuff because he's flying. He does. See? Yeah. See how much cooler he is than us? He'll but tell you. Why shouldn't you have known that? I don't fly in Phoenix. Oh, I see. The, yeah, by, the by biggest the way, mountain in Florida is Space Mountain. True story. The biggest mountain in Florida is Space Mountain, 351 feet tall. Oh, I my. love that ride. Yeah, That's it's great. So yeah, yeah I, just, I just want to say to the Phoenix listeners, I am totally joking. And uh, because there is a joke <laughs> that if you live in Scottsdale, it's called Snotsdale. Oh. Because you're kind of snotty. Well, maybe it's and not a I'm joke. Snotty. Well, yeah, no, it's he, he got the credibility. He got the creds, man. He says he's not a land snob, but he's an he's an elevation snob. Apparently, I'm definitely an elevation snob. No, <laughs> just five minutes ago oh. I wasn't, but now I am. Yeah, see, like I'm surprised you even went down the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, he yes. might not come next time. Yes, uh, yeah, right. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, that's at like, I don't know, whatever the elevation is, but I don't go below 900 feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I don't know. What's, what's the Vegas elevation going to be? Vegas is cooler than Scottsdale. We're at like 2,400, I think. Huh. So, I mean, we definitely look down on those in Arizona. <laughs> no is, doubt. Is there, there, is a, there is an elevation superiority for those in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we just know. Oh. Where the, when it comes to hot places, we know we got it. We're best. When, there's, when they're sober and clearly can think, yeah. they think, oh, well, right. 
Y- yeah, Mark, your, your elevation is only uh, 1,257 feet. I mean, it's really oh, low, really low when you think about it. What's the average temperature in July? In Scottsdale? No, in Vegas. Vegas, we're at a comfortable like 108, 108 probably. I mean. But it's a dry heat maybe? It's a dry something? heat. Unlike Florida, there's, you know, it's a dry heat. You're not just sweating all the time. No gators you have to deal with. It's a good, good place. I mean. No javelina. No, no cougars. No, yeah, wild cats like we had in Chandler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And fish. That's true. <laughs> it's really. But we got good pools, right? <laughs> good buffets. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, What's your taking, elevation team? Oh, like 20, sorry. 20, oh, now he's just now eight? getting to the conversation. Yeah, I just, you know, I just heard that. I was waiting for the delay. He's, he's, he's at 2,000. Vegas is at 2,000. Scottsdale is at 1,200. I'm at 650. I'm at 108. So. Yeah, I'm about I'm at 1,000. Look at that. What's Eric at? 650. So I'm looking down on all of you is what you're telling me. You're the king of the mountain, apparently. I knew it. (laughs) This only confirms my prior suspicions. How are we supposed to see over your shoulder if you're that high? (sighs) It's going to be hard. That's why I had to to videotape. That was good, Eric. (laughs) You can't look look over Ty's shoulder. (laughs) Looking up at Tate. Lutz, look up at Tate. <laughs> got to change the name. Yeah, change the name. Oh, buddy. Oh, I, I'm. I can see the meme right now. That's good. The uh, the gif. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I may. I may, I I'm making a meme right now. I ha- I have a I I I I got the knowledge. I got the connection. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't say meme with, with around. Oh, no, can't no no. Don't say nothing. Can't say it. Don't say anything. Everybody's right. like, "What the heck is he even talking about?" Inside Got baseball. Inside. inside baseball. Baseball. Aaron can come up with a, a, one for us, right? She's a meme maker. <laughs> she yeah. is a meme maker. Maker. <laughs> She's good at it. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'm gonna go uh, go eat lunch. Tate, are you eating lunch? Have you eaten yet? I ate already, yeah. Okay, good. I I worry about your blood sugar. All right. right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.